Let's go on a trip to a Korean egg bakery. Their menu is written in large letters on a board. Let's start the process, but before that, they are arranging baking trays. They sell two types of egg bread, the original egg bread and the signature egg bread. Original egg bread costs 1,000 won, and signature egg bread costs 3,000 won. They are pouring the batter they have prepared into each baking tray, and then cracking an egg on top. They whisk it with the help of chopsticks and place cheese slices over the large trays. And then it's time to add sausage and more and more shredded cheese on top and bottom of each. Do you know it was originated in Poland? Then they add salt to the small trays and whisk it. Now it is time to bake it. They place all the baking trays inside the baking machine and leave it for a few minutes. Now they take out the egg bread from the machine and place it in aluminum foil. This is our original bread. On the other hand, sausage and egg breads are ready too. They take them out and place them in aluminum foil too. This one is our signature egg bread. Then sprinkle the seasoning on top. Here, our original and signature cheese egg breads are ready to serve the customers. I am dying to take a bite from it. Let's move on to our next restaurant and observe how they make meat balm thick soup ramen. They start with making soup. They add some ingredients and kanbu in a container, then pour some water over it and leave it. Now, they wash the chicken and strain the excess water with the help of a strainer. They shift all sorts of chickens, lots of chicken feet, into the container. Then, they fill the container with water and boil it. Now, they take out the pork belly and wipe off the excessive water. And cut out the fat from it. Then, they cut that into halves and then roll it and tie a butcher's knot around it. A butcher's knot is used to secure meat for roasting. In the same manner, they make eight pork belly rolls. They already have placed water on gas enriched with ingredients. First, they remove the foam that is formed. And then, they add the slices of fat they just removed from the pork belly. After stirring it, they add the pork belly they just prepared. Now, they add salt to the brisket, spread it all over evenly with their hands, wrap it in plastic, and then vacuum seal it. The meat needs more time to be cooked. After packing the meat, place it in normal temperature water for a few minutes and cover it. Now, they take out seven pork belly rolls from the container, deep fry three of them in oil with secret ingredients, and cover them. Now they add green and white onions and the kanbu soup they prepared in the beginning. After mixing it, they leave it to be cooked. It's time to boil some eggs. They then take out the chicken rolls from the container. They are completely spiced up and then wrapped in plastic. They have boiled the mixture for so long that every ingredient is completely cooked and has become soft. Now they strain it and use the water that has been produced with this mixture. This water is pork soup. The liquid is milky in color, and the residue is kept aside to make curry from it. It's time to check on the roll they left in the water. They take it out, place it in a container filled with ice cubes, and cover it with ice cubes for a few minutes. A few rolls are being boiled, and a few are left in ice. And from the left ones, the butcher's knot is removed and they are being cut into halves. Now, they cut them into slices with the slicing machine, apply some oil, grill them, and blowtorch them. And they store the slices of the other half for other dishes. Now, in three bowls, they are adding different spices and flavors. Only God knows what they are. The bowls are then left to be steam cooked. In one container, they pour some soup, and in the other, they pour the pork soup, and then heat them for a few minutes. Then they add the pork soup or chicken soup in three bowls and onions, which gives the soup different tastes since all three bowls have different ingredients. Now it's time to prepare the noodles. 
they boil noodles, stir them so they are nicely boiled, and after stirring, add it to the first bowl. The pork slices are then placed in the corner of this bowl. And then they add fried pork slices, kanbu green onions, a boiled egg, and chicken paste. In another bowl, they add noodles and chicken slices and are blowtorched. Then, place chicken slices in a corner with chopped onions and some other ingredients, like narutumaki. Do you even know what narutumaki is? It's made from surimi, a white fish paste produced in Japan, kimchi, and pickles. In the third one, they first added noodles, then green onion and white onion paste, then chicken, egg yolk, and boiled eggs cut into halves. It is chewy, yummy, healthy, and full of protein. Our thick soup, ramen bombarded with meat, is ready to be served. Let's go to Giallo Italian Restaurant and observe how they make their homemade cheese pasta. They start the process by adding gompio flour and semolina flour. They crack six eggs, and after pouring oil, they mix it with the help of a machine and knead it thoroughly with their hands. Then, it's wrapped in plastic and stored in the refrigerator. It's time to chop the vegetables. Three large onions, two carrots, seven tomatoes, spinach, and coriander are chopped up. And some spices are added on top. Now they are shredding the cheese and stir-frying ground beef until it turns black, then placing it in a container. Now they fry the onions until they're cooked. Then they add them to the container of beef and then fry the tomatoes after adding salt and tomato sauce. Stir it just for a few minutes. Now they pour the beef, onions, and carrots into the pot, add water, and then empty two more cans of tomato sauce into it. Isn't that too much? Well, it's none of my business. After stirring, they add spinach, paste, and shredded cheese. After stirring for a while, they pour it into a container. Now, they wash the clams and boil them for a few minutes. Clams are considered one of the most nutritious foods all over the world. After straining them with cotton cloths, they cut the bacon in half, then into thin slices, and keep that in a bowl for now, it's high time to take out the dough. They cut it into halves and then into small portions. Then they flatten the dough with their hands and roll it. Using a pasta maker, they make the roll as thin as desired. By repeating the process over and over, they sprinkle the flour over it and run it through the machine again. Then they cut it into the shape of pasta. Now they put three pans on the stove. In the first pan, bacon is fried, clams in the second, and shrimp in the last pan. Garlic paste, chili flakes, and spices are added to each pan after stirring. They add some flavorings, spices, and paste to the bowls. It's time to boil the pasta, stir it, and leave it for a few minutes. On the other hand, they are frying prawns. Then, they add the pasta to each pan one by one and cook them while constantly stirring. Now, they empty the pan one by one into the servings delicately and garnish them. Three different types of cheese pasta are ready to be served. The first one is tomato sauce with yogurt on top and seasonings. I just want to fly to Korea to eat that. The second one is clam pasta. Well... How will they eat that? Is it chewable? Finally, the last one is shrimp and prawn pasta. Hello, prawn. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to see more, please click and subscribe to the channel to be notified about when our next video is posted. Bon appetit.